Well, welcome to tonight. We are doing a review tonight. Uh, Shauna sent me an inbox a little while ago that said, oh my goodness, we have gone through so much in the last five months. She took two months, I took two months uh, to do the review. So that's what we're going to go over tonight. So uh, do you have anything to add? Shana? Just that... Um yeah, like I all I could think is as I was reviewing things is if we put all this stuff into action, like we are soaring high, you know, all of this information is great, but putting it into action is a whole nother game. Definitely. <laughs> That's a very good point. Okay, so we're going to start with month one, which was August. And I'm going to grab the stuff I'm going to put in the chat. So the first, the very first week we opened up with Tammy Shack. She came and taught us how to do AFT. And AFT is actually a, an emotional releasing technique that um, is a number system. You, you give a specific number to your emotion and then you go through this process of releasing and then you reevaluate. And if the number is still, uh, if it's still a low number, you will go back and reevaluate. And you continue to do that until you feel confident with uh, the, the end result that you desire. So if it's getting to gold, if that's your goal and you feel not so good about that, uh, you figure out why, where you're feeling it in your body. You give it a number um, of how true you think it is or how real it is that you'll be able to get to gold. Assess why you're feeling that number and then releasing. And you release generically with a, um, a group of three different oils in um, equal amounts of frankincense, lavender, and stress away. So you can make that up anytime you want and you do that. So it's a very simple way to quickly release emotions. I would recommend that you get in the group and download the worksheet and you can actually go back and watch the video and do the worksheet anytime that you're needing to release emotions. And you can do that as often as you need to go ahead and get, uh, get that memorized. It's a very simple process, uh, but it has great benefit. So that was week one. And I am going to put in the chat ways that you can get a hold of Tammy Shack. Because Tammy Shack, um, she also will do private sessions for you. She will do group sessions. Um, she has gotten certified in that. And everybody knows that she's just, I mean, if you're going to emotionally release around somebody, she's very safe. <laughs> she's, she's a rock star. So that was week one. Uh, a lot of people saw a lot of movement from that week. So I would highly recommend maybe you revisiting that week. Then we did the 555 challenge. And that was contact uh, five prospects, five zero PV, five non ER, um, five people that you want to run with in this business, and then five lost friends, five long lost friends. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? No, I'm kidding. So if you if you don't have some people in some of those categories, well, just continue to contact those people that you haven't talked to in a long time. And so the 555 challenge, you can do anytime you want. And um, I'll bring that in again later about contacting 25 people a week. That's a really, really good number to grow your business. Okay, week two, Shauna talked about sharing and how we can share. We talked about the various ways you can share. And the thing is, is that you are an individual. So you will share a little bit differently than other people. And for the last, um, as long as I've been working my business, however long that is, um, I've had a sharing plan. I have shared oils with people and hoped that eventually they loved the products enough to work the business. That has been my plan this for this long. It has worked for me, um, but the last three years 
has been very slow growth, which platinum's a great place to be, right? So I'm okay with that. But just like you, I want to see continual growth in my organization and what's going on with me personally. Um, so I decided to do something a little different, but we talked about sharing and there's lots of ways to share. So find your way to share and move forward with it. Week three, the law of attraction. Rhonda Boyle, she is amazing. She taught us how to begin with the end in mind, dream about what it is that you want and use your words to bring that about. And if you're focusing on negative things, negative things are actually drawn to you. So it's like a magnet. Our thoughts and our actions magnetize us to more of the same. So if you use words like, of course, that always happens to me. Those kinds of things are drawing those things to you. So remember, uh, your thoughts and your words are a magnet. What are you wanting to bring to you? Do more of that. All right. Then we had a um, relationship sh series via text. Uh, oh, hold on just a second. I've got resources for you. I'm going to put in Rhonda Boyles here. Here's Rhonda Boyles information. She has two Facebook groups. Um, one is Law of Attraction Hack. She teaches you how to um, hack the law of attraction. And then um, Lisa, the Bible references are in the uh, in one of the weeks that I taught, and I'll tell you whenever I get to it. Uh, so then she also has the very best you that is focused around her uh, her coaching as a strength finder coach. Very valuable. And then her website, rondaboyle.com. Okay, and then we did the little relationship series with John Maxwell. Uh, we didn't do anything um, on Zoom with that, but we learned a lot about relationships. We learned that the more confident you are, the more confidence you can share with others. That's really important, especially for someone like me who never, never, never worked with women. I worked with two women. They were both my secretaries. Um, I worked in a field completely of men. And it was very hard for me to get along with those secretaries just because I didn't know. I don't have any sisters, you know, just not around girls. Um, all my stuff in high school was wood shop and drafting, you know, so I was not around girls hardly at all. So this is the first time I've ever been around women. And I learned the more confidence I have, the less I even have to worry about anybody else, what they're doing, what they're saying, anything like that. You know, sometimes women can be petty, but if you have confidence in yourself and what you're doing, uh, maybe that's not even on your radar. So it's the same with all relationships. If you're safe, people will be drawn to you. If you're confident, people will be drawn to you. Okay, so that was part of that. And then also um, start on a positive note with people. Even if you have something negative that you need to discuss with them, start on a positive note. If you're that person that just naturally you see what's wrong with stuff, Remember to inject some positive before you start critiquing. No matter how powerful, uh, how painful it is, no matter what's going on. It's, painful and powerful. It is powerful, yes. And then listen to understand. I really charge you guys all day tomorrow, zip it. Listen to understand somebody and ask some important, meaningful questions to people and see what you can draw out of people because everybody's looking for connection. Okay, so um, John Maxwell, I put that in the chat. That's how you can get his minute with Maxwell. Every single day, he will deliver a little blip to you and you will continue to learn. That was just one small series of many things that he discusses. And that is, uh, that is free. We like free. Okay, the next one is Gwen Tenney. Uh, we did a little bit of um, a, a sales series with her. It's just a two-part series. We uh, put that within the group uh, that you can look up. She just talks to you about some sales techniques that you can utilize. And so 
Um, I'm going to put her information in here. I'm going to actually be talking about her twice. Okay, so then the week four is paradigm shift. That's where you're going to find those scriptures. That's where you're going to find um, how, to, um, how to change your mind, how to change the way from we've always done it this way and moving into how you want it to be. Because everything you believe unless you have decided as an adult to choose to believe that you got from programming. So it may be right, but it's better for you to have your own conviction about what you believe. So it's really important that we all just kind of question what we believe and question what we do. And I remember during that week, I talked about the ham story, right? The ham story, the, the wife was cutting the ham. She cuts the end off the ham all the time. Her husband's like, why are you throwing that good piece of meat away? And so we go through that. She's like, I'm going to ask my mom. My mom says, I don't know. I've always done that. Uh, just always cut that piece of meat off. And then the grandma asks her and she goes, I don't know why y'all are doing it, but it wouldn't fit in my pan. Right? So there's a lot of times that we are just doing things because we were programmed to do them. And that person had a reason, grandma had a reason to, but we don't have a reason to, right? So that's where you'll find all that stuff. Um, I think that's a, an important part um, because we show a video of Bob Proctor. That's where the rubber meets the road on changing your mind and how you can do that and not lose your convictions or your belief system or anything like that. Um, but it can make you a little uncomfortable to think why do I believe that? All right, so that wraps up month one. <laughs> Shauna, on to month two. Man, was month one full of great things. Um, so month two was about follow-up and self-worth. And I'm just going to say I'm still using my rollerball and saying the affirmations and the scriptures. Why? Because even though I know I'm worth it, even though I know God says I'm worth it, even though I hear others say I'm worth it, my thoughts constantly want to revert back to, you just must not be worth it. So I am learning that, you know, consistency, continuing to do the things. If you have the same thoughts going through your head, figure out what those are and make some changes. Um, so one thing I've learned during Claiming Your Harvest is that if we don't feel we're worth it, it begins with our thoughts, and we have to ask ourselves, what am I telling myself daily? So I continue to keep this list close by, and when my results or circumstances around me begin to affect my thoughts, I begin to replace those thoughts with the affirmations and scriptures. So if you guys, whether you're using one of the ones that we've given you, or if you put something together, I highly recommend having something to go to so when those thoughts come up, you have something to work with. Um, so follow up. That was our first week in month two is the key to building your business. We've talked about this over and over. I don't think there is any business classes you can take that they're not going to say follow up is the key. Um, what typically stops us from following up? I think we kind of talked about that a little bit. I would say fear. Um, fear of what? The unknown or the answer no. So we kind of did a no challenge that month. And um, if we think about what's the worst thing they can say when I follow up is no. Is it really that bad? Like, is it going to be the end of the world if somebody says no, right? And also we can think about, I like to use the coffee, the tea um, analogy. So if I was to come into your house, you were to ask me if I would like some coffee, I can promise you I am going to say no. All right. It's nothing personal about you. I just don't like coffee. All right. If you ask me if I want some tea, guess what? I would probably say no. I'm not much of a tea drinker either. If you were to ask me if I want some water, I probably would say yes or I would say I have my own. Okay. And so a lot of times we take things personally when people say the word no, when really we just don't understand. So just like Sunshine was saying, sometimes we need to listen to understand instead of listening to respond because they may give us the answer. I may just not like coffee, but do you have something else for me? All right. Um, 
We gave you a few ways to organize follow-up using an Excel form from Eric Walton. And I'm going to say I'm not as organized as Miss Sunshine here with all these little posts, but you can go into the files um, to find that in my group. And I'm guessing you can find that in Sunshine's files too. Um, but this is the... Um, that's one way. Also, we talked about funnel your focus. That's a way that you can print off if you're one to want to follow up having a writing system. Really, it's whatever is going to work for you. I can tell you um, the system that you use is the best system. If you will not use that system, there's no sense in buying it, getting it, looking at it, all that. You want to find a system that you're going to use. Now, um, then we had the Zoom call with Gary Cox, Transforming Your Fair into Massive Action. Um, I just want to say that I think all of the coaches that we have had have been outstanding. I don't even know that I could put any of them above or below the other. But I will want to say that with Gary Cox, this was something very big for me. And I kind of brought sunshine in. But this was the first time that I, like, I paid real money for a real coach to really come in and speak to us. And that was a big step. Um, Sunshine and I put out a fleece saying, hey, you know, like, can we do this? And um, we did it, all right? And so I just wanna say, if there's things that make you feel uncomfortable, do it, okay? That's how you're gonna grow. And for me, it was taking a phone call from someone I did not even know, somebody I just heard about from other people. And so sometimes I think that within this Claiming Your Harvest that we've spent the last four and a half months doing is um, look at the little things that you got out of your comfort zone, out of the box to do during this time period and how you feel about that. Okay, so some of the things, um, he really discussed the importance of changing our thinking, which was what we talked about in month one, two. Um, so how do we change our thinking? And I really liked what he said, these three, three main things, if you can remember this. Change your story, believe your story, you will change your life. Okay, um, so often our fear is related to a future thought we don't have control over. We're afraid that something's going to happen and we're making this whole story in our head about something that's in the future that we have no control over and we don't even know if it's really gonna happen. Um, so I love when he gave us this phrase, when my feelings are not in harmony with my goals, ignore my feelings. And I am going to say that if you guys are like me, so there's probably 50% of you, you thought, I can't ignore my feelings. Those are my feelings, right? I have learned so much since this call with the other coaches that I've been working with that I actually had my, I'm going to say my first encounter yesterday with kind of dealing with this. Um, and if we have time, I might bring that up. But I just want you to really think, if you know what you want, I mean, you really know what you want. So I'm just going to throw it out there. If you know you want to be Royal Crown Diamond and something comes up and you have these feelings inside of you and you're like, oh, I can't do that because of the way you feel and it's stopping you and that is not going to get you where you want to go, ignore it. Okay, pay attention to what you set up to be your goals and work towards those goals and say feelings. And we're going to talk about what we're going to say to those feelings, but just say feelings like, why? why, why am I feeling this? Acknowledge it. Okay, so that's exactly what he said. First, we need to acknowledge how we feel. So if you are nervous, if you are sad, if you are happy, you're anything that you're feeling, I want you to acknowledge it. We are going to ignore it at a point, but we first want to acknowledge it, okay? Second, we need to have goals we're working towards. If we don't have goals, how do we know if our goals are in harmony with our feelings, okay? Third, we need to be aware if our feelings and our goals are in alignment, okay? So those are the three things. First, we need to acknowledge how we feel. Second, we need to have goals we are working towards. And third, we need to be aware if our feelings and goals are in alignment, Okay, so how do we control our feelings? We control our thoughts. Okay, I'm reading a whole book about that right now. All right, we have control of our thoughts. God gave us control over our thoughts. Our thoughts is what causes our feelings. I'm going to be honest. I've kind of been arguing about this maybe for several months because I kept going, no, my feelings is then what makes me think a certain thing. And I'm realizing that they're right. I've been known to be wrong. I, I love it when people prove me wrong, right? 
So um, our thoughts, what we continuously think about is what brings us our feelings. So we go back to what he said, when my feelings are not in harmony with my goals, ignore my feelings. So what that's saying is if my feelings are not in harmony with my goals, what am I thinking about? What am I focusing on? Okay. So how many of us don't have written goals? That was step two, right? He said that whatever we focus on is our goals. Wow. So there's a chance I'm meeting unwritten goals based on what I'm focusing on. So maybe you don't have a certain goal written down, but you're thinking over and over, mm, I don't have enough OG this month to hit rank. Mm, I don't have enough OGV this month to hit rank. So what am I focusing on right there? I'm focusing on what I don't have. And so guess what happens at the end of the month? I don't have enough OGV to hit my rank. Okay. Um, so really be thinking about having those goals, writing them down. So that's the first thing. You want to write your goal. Your goal is what you want. Not what you don't want, but what you want. Second, you want to focus on your goal. Third, Gary says to write them down each day. And I'm going to say that's my plan for 2019. My plan is every day I want to know what the goal is that I am working towards. So I may have multiple goals. I'm not saying every single goal that I have I'm going to write down every day. But whatever I'm focusing on that day, I want to make sure that I write my goal down and I know what it is. My purpose is for that day. And we're going to talk more about goals next week. Now, he says, remember that each emotion comes from a story that you tell yourself. So if we don't change our story, then we will stay stuck in that story. He went over with several people. If you guys did not watch that, I highly recommend watching it because he walks people through um, their story. And um, if you are not getting the results you want, it's your story, guys. You've got to change your story to change your results. Um, so how do we change our story? How do we change those results? We write it out. We write out what we want our new story to be. And when we begin to believe it, that's when our feelings are going to change. And when our feelings change, our life changes. All right. So we go back to that ignoring those feelings. So what am I going to do? Oh my gosh, this is how I feel. I, I don't know. We're going to acknowledge it. And then we're going to change our story. Why am I thinking that? How can I change my thought process so that I can change my feelings? And it may not happen right then. Like I said, I've been doing this for, I've been working on this all year long. It's December and I finally had like a moment of, ha ha, like something's changing. I see it. I feel it. So know that you may need to do this over and over and over. Keep pouring this into you. And um, once we know the story we want, we write our goals. Then we need to write down action steps to reach those goals. Again, we're going to talk more about that next week. Um, so this is exactly what I did after listening to Gary and, and that first month is um, I started writing my story for 2019. I said, okay, what do I want 2019 to look like? I, this is something I kind of always do around October. So this was in September and I'm starting to think about it and I'm writing it down and I'm thinking about it. And this is what led me to the six squared strategy that we'll be talking about later. But this is my business plan for 2019 because this is exactly what I did was take Gary Cox's and all these other coaches advice and put it together. Um, I wrote down the story I wanted. I set up goals to reach that and an action plan. Okay. So game changer. This is what Gary said is the game changer. You are made up of your thoughts, but you are not your thoughts. A house is made up of bricks, but a brick is not a house, right? So you get to choose your thoughts. You get to build your house. And um, he also asked us a hard question. So I'm going to ask this question again, and I would love for you guys to type in the chat. Are you doing this as a job or a hobby? What's 2019 looking like for you guys? Are you going to treat this like a job? Or are you going to treat this like a hobby? And the next thing I'm going to ask you is, have you written your story for 2019? If not, I highly recommend that you do this this week because we're going to be focusing on goals next week. And if you don't know what your story is going to be, you're going to not going to know what your goals are going to be. Okay. So that's the homework I'm giving you guys for this next week. Write your goals. The next person we had was Julie Seenum. Am I saying her name right? Seenum? Seenum? Um, she has Senum. a... Seenum. Thank you. Has a psychology degree and is a deep thinker. Um, I loved listening to her just because she is totally different. Um, 
than me. She's different than Sunshine, but her and I have some things, so I can see how her and Sunshine can get along because we both have found that there's some things that um, we're missing that helps bring each other together. Um, I love that she joined together with one of her team members and used her strengths and her business partner used her strengths and the two were able to build their business together. Um, she learned how to get out of her comfort zone and build her business too. So even though at times we can work together with people, use our strengths, there's going to be a time if we want to do this as a job that we're going to have to get out of our comfort zone. And she shared that. And um, how did she do it? She did it because her why was big enough. It was feeding her family. So if you are not getting where you want to go, ask yourself, is my why big enough? Just a second. Do you want... <laughs> my son's needing scissors okay are you running your business like someone else are you constantly judging yourself against others or comparing yourself to others um, you have a story do you share your story so Julie was great about sharing her story letting us know what her story was then the next week we had my good friend Gina Leckenberger um, she spoke about her wellness story that helped her family with both health and wealth. That's the business we're in, guys. This business right here can help you both with health and wealth. Um, here's the thing. She is no different from you or me. Like Julie, she joined arms with her good friend that was one of her members and put together essential families. They both used their strengths to build up their team. Gina had to get past the many issues from having lack to having abundance. Gina reminds us that we are often spend time working that does not really make a big difference. Um, so if you want to hustle for a season, just let your family know and then make sure you're seeing the results during your hustle and it's not for nothing. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there that hustle, 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 and they meet their goals, and that is great. And I know other people that hustle, 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 they don't get anywhere, but they may lose out. They're sacrificing, and they're not getting anything accomplished. So we want to make sure that there are going to be times and seasons that we're going to hustle, but what are we doing? Are we really, are we just working to work, or are we working and making progress? Um, Gina is all about community and about staying in your lane. She shared a little bit about that and um, really building up her community. She also shared that her mindset of time for money had to be switched. And even though we're in a business that allows us to make money, even when we aren't working or even reaching what she called the investor position, that often we feel guilty because our mindset is not there yet. She left us with remembering that there are five things to building this business, okay? Number one, enrolling people. If you're building a business and you're not enrolling people or having people that are enrolling people, you're not building a business, right? So number two is helping your people enroll people. So first, enroll people. Two, help those people enroll people. Three, get your people on a century rewards. That's the bread and butter. Four, teach your people to get their people on essential rewards because that's their bread and butter. And five, increase orders. All right. So those are the five things that she talked about to build this business. And um, if you've participated in our six squared strategy, you'll see that those five things are in that business plan. If what you're doing is not one of those five things, then your business will not grow. So the great thing is anyone can do it their way she talked about this those five things wasn't saying the way you had to share wasn't saying um who you had to share with it was those five things is what is bringing this business but we can share that business side of it however works best for our strengths gina also shared her excuse podcast if you haven't listened to that i highly recommend it um, so let's be honest this is the number one reason people's business does not grow man we can come up with some excuses can't we so that was month two another very full month man so much stuff okay so we are on to month three. I was like, oh, I, I just looked at something and it said four. I was like, did I do the wrong month? No, I didn't. Okay. So month one, we were focusing um, emotionally. We were focusing, I didn't say that, on belief and relationship. And one of the affirmations was, I believe I'm a blessing to others through my business. 
And that is just meeting needs. Meeting needs. Okay, uh, so October was month three. We focused on growth. And one of the affirmations was, my personal growth is easy and exciting. The way you get ahead in this business is co to continue to grow. Uh, Gary Young said it at convention two years ago. Well, no, last year on a video, he said, the best thing that you can do for you and your business is to get to know yourself. So if you become a scientist on yourself, figure out how you tick and how you can bless others, that will reward you in big ways. So uh, week one was education. We focused on education. We talked about how people learn. We talked about the ways you can educate people. Um, and then ER also. So there's some things like um, project broadcast. Uh, is it hit them up? Is that the free one, Shauna? Is that what it's called? Okay. So uh, project broadcast, you can prepare a text in advance and send it out whenever you want. Uh, I planned a text for uh, my people at 7.54 tonight that said, hey, your webinar is beginning. Here's the link. And so um, that's something that you can do in advance. I could plan that two weeks ago and it will go out tonight at 7.54. It's pretty cool. Um, Hit them up is a free, is it, I think it might be $10 to buy it forever. Was it free? Do you know? I, I, don't remember because I did it like two summers ago. <laughs> it's very low cost. <laughs> it is low cost. It's either free, free or $10, not a month or anything. It's like $10. But it's um, an app, yeah. Yeah, it's an app that you can use that you can text multiple people at one time. And so it goes out from your phone number, but then they can respond singularly. Um, so you go in and select who you want that email to, uh, text to go to. It might go to five people. Um, and then it'll look like it just came just from your number. It's not a group text where you know how crazy that can get. It's not like that. It's very simple. The thing is, is that you can't pre-program it. So um, when you want it to go out, you need to send it out. Um, but it is, it is very low cost. And then of course there's Facebook. Um, with Facebook, you have to constantly be educating yourself on how it works, uh, what the what the latest thing is, if they're trying to keep you away from your friends or not. I mean, it's been different all through all through the time. Um, and then there's things like Marco Polo. That's like a walkie a video walkie talkie. Uh, there's Zoom, like we've been using a lot in these last few months uh, in person. You can like get with people face to face. That's pretty cool. And then email. And email um, is one of those things that's real hit or miss. But we have this cool thing called a relationship map where we can find out how people like to be contacted and how they like to learn. Okay, so that's one of the things that you can implement with this education. Okay, week two was creating future memories with Gwen Tenney. Um, I posted um, in the chat her contact information. She has a uh, Facebook page that is called Diamond Frame of Mind. She has a paid subscription to one group, and then she also has a free group. Uh, and the, if you join the free group, you can kind of see the kind of things, um, it's just upgraded and more intense in the paid version. It's $20 a month, I believe. Um, it's very much worth it if you're going to do the homework. If you're going to go through it, it's worth the money. Okay, but she talked about creating um, future memories by beginning with the end in mind and how important it is for you to get a vision of the way it's going to be. And, you know, in scripture, it talks about he knows the end from the beginning. So he looks from the end too. Like he knows how it all ends. And so you can do that very thing and you can utilize that strategy to, again, magnetize what it is that you want to yourself. And there's, there's a lot of scientific um, information and facts and things like that, that will, that can show you that this really does happen like you are putting out a certain energy and if you are thinking about 
I'm not going to make enough OGV this month. Well, that's what's coming to you. So uh, you can look that up for yourself, do some research, but she talked about that and how you can actually create those future memories by, by meditating on those things that you want to be. So uh, when you are writing out your goals, like Shauna asked you to by next week, uh, sit and think about what it would be like after those, you've already achieved those goals. Sit there and think for a moment. Now that I've achieved this, how do I feel? What does it look like? What am I experiencing? And see, taste, sound, sight. Uh, the more senses you can incorporate into imagining as it's already accomplished, the more it sets into your subconscious mind. And guess what? It's pretty cool. There's a book called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. Your subconscious mind never sleeps and you can be having it work for you all night long while you're peacefully resting. And if you're a Christian, the Holy Spirit resides inside you. Your subconscious has access to the kingdom. Hmm. You think maybe it could be doing some good stuff for you while you're sleeping? You betcha. All right. So week three, who owns your business? Donna just asked you, are you doing it as a hobby or a job? And I'm asking you, what's your skin in the game? Like for real, legit, you have to have some skin in the game. Your why has to be big or your purpose has to be big. Something you have to, um, Eric Walton, who we're using his five pillars to go through this whole claim your harvest. He, um, he said, if I had the option, when a new business builder got started with me, I'd make them get an LLC because it costs about $600, 600 to $1,000 to get started with an LLC. If you put that kind of money into your business, do you think that'd wake you up a little bit? Like, oh, I might, I might need to do something about this, right? I spent that money. So do something that puts skin in the game. It doesn't have to necessarily be money. It can be time. It can be some kind of sacrifice. Uh, Beth brought up some stuff, and I mentioned the pockets of time. That is so very important because uh, there are opportunities in your life where you're going to have to do that little extra when you don't want to, when you're tired, when you wish you could just not, not think about it, and you got to push that little extra. That little extra adds up, and that is where you're in a place where you can leave that job you can actually start using Young Living as a full-time income. But it's, that, it's those little sacrifices that you make that really build up. Okay, so you, you got to just choose to own your business. It's your responsibility. Nobody can do this for you. I mean, people can place people under you and all that stuff, but you're at the mercy of whatever they do. When you take responsibility and you take ownership of your business, all of a sudden you get to choose which direction you want it to go. So I listened to a really cool thing from Bob Proctor today. Uh, he talked about you must do it yourself. You can do it with others, but you have to do it yourself. So are you going to do it? All right, week four. Week four, we um, unveiled the six squared strategy for you. This is an absolutely new approach to developing your network marketing company. We focus on three simple products and building a business. That is what it's all about. So uh, it's a little different for all of you who are already members. I talked to you about how I had a sharing strategy. I have been sharing for years. Sharing is telling people the health benefits of the oils and I hope that they will become business builders. Some of them have, and that's wonderful when that happens. However, all the people that I know could do this haven't. Why is that? Some of them heard that word business and they're like, not interested. Why? I don't know. Maybe they were told network marketing is inferior to an inferior way of making money. Maybe they learned the hard way. They bought $10,000 worth of product that they have in their garage still. I mean, it's possible, right? 
some some companies you put a lot of skin in the game i know that i um i happened upon young living and this very thing about me having a sharing plan that's exactly how i got started i was just loving the products and i decided to share um, but i was in a network marketing company prior to this and i put in two thousand dollars to get started selling something i didn't use before I started that company hmm. because I saw the benefit of network marketing. Okay. So Young Living has worked for me, but I haven't had a really solid business plan until the six squared strategy and this strategy. So <laughs> this whole claim your harvest, I think is just a great preparation. If this is something that you're wanting to do because you have to shift your mind completely from the way it's been done in the past because it's not just a sharing plan it's actually letting people know up front the ability they have to make money with young living and so we keep it really simple it's based upon three products that are focused on energy and then the business is focused on money so we discussed that in week four um, you're welcome to watch that one that was our very first one it's kind of rough so we have upped our game a little bit on our presentations. We've done it dozens of times now. <laughs> and so if you're interested in hearing that, uh, Shauna and I can introduce you to that. These are some of the things that are provided on the Six Squared Strategy, and we are gearing up as this Claim Your Harvest is winding down. We are gearing up the Six Squared Strategy. So for those folks that are already in the Six Squared Strategy and they're dedicated to using that to build their team, there are some wonderful things coming. So enjoy the next couple of weeks and get ready to gear up to make it work. Okay, so you can utilize the paradigm shift. Uh, talk in week month one to get prepared for that six squared strategy week five was brandon barber brandon barber is a rock star he has a free assessment that you can take if you have not done that oh man it takes 10 minutes go do it uh, it's very interesting because it actually tells you how your brain makes decisions and so here's his information he has a website there's a link for the free assessment there's a facebook page and um, he is coming in january january 18th and 19th to oklahoma you texas folks you better be coming i got my gal from ohio <laughs> she's coming if she can come that far so can you okay so he has this assessment it's 42 pages that's all 10 minutes and you get this 42 page report and he tells you how your brain makes decisions from this uh, report it's based upon axiology and so from there he teaches you he says your brain's not broken he says you're not broken there's nothing wrong with you and i love the way he approaches that he just says when you make bad decisions or you have bad habits is because your brain is giving you bad advice and so he teaches strategies on how you can um, do a workaround until your brain starts giving you good advice. Oh, Beth's coming from Tennessee. Sweet. Awesome. Oh, yes. Caitlin from California. You guys are serious. That is skin in the game, folks, right there. Skin in the game. They got to make it work, right? You got to make it work. All right. So um, he's going to go over how you can give good advice and from what he said is you can take what you learn in those two days and you've got the skills that or you've got the tools you need and then from there you need to practice 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 and so uh, he is just a, a blessing because he's coming for so the tickets are so inexpensive. They're $49 right now for two days. That includes the Live Your Passion Rally. So there will be giveaways and information and um, oil related stuff. So you folks that are local, bring your friends that aren't oilers. 
have them take the assessment. This would be a great way for them to get a little bit of oil education and a lot of great information that's going to help them regardless of if they are in Young Living or not. All right, so that wraps up the month of October. All right, thank you, Sunshine. Guys, I am, again, as we reviewed this and I'm going through it, I'm going, we have packed out the last few months with information. But this information is only as good as using it. And I am just as guilty as the next person on taking information and moving on to something else before I'm utilizing it. And so a lot of what I have planned for 2019 has been taking that information and putting it into action. So that's how we got the six squared strategy. Um, that's how I saw change in my life yesterday. This is how coaches, it's been amazing seeing these coaches just, I don't want to say they're popping out of the woodwork, but they've kind of popped out of the woodwork. And I'm pretty sure that Sunshine and I had this conversation either the very end of last year, pretty sure it was the very end of last year because we were doing unconvention together and we were talking about coaches and how do you find coaches guys if you ask for it and they will pop out and come to you because that is what's happened this last year so month four was about serve and responsibility and sunshine just hit just for a minute about responsibility but your business is your responsibility um so we're going to just throw that out there we discussed in our Zoom call how we could help our team and how as leaders we could best serve. Um, I think that sometimes we get so busy doing the day-to-day -day things that we don't leave enough open time to serve others when something comes up. We discussed um, uh, Mary's and there was other, um, I don't know who all on, on the Claiming Your Harvest, but several people on um, Sunshine's team that lived down in Florida that was um, part of the hurricane and stuff and how sometimes we just need to step back and look at how we can serve others. And I know for me, a lot of times my schedule is just busy. And sometimes it's just that word right there, just busy, not necessarily productive and um, full of stuff that I am not allowing myself to be able to serve others. So since that call, I will be, and um, just want to thank Mary for kind of opening that up. I am leaving some room, some margin in my schedule in my life to be able to serve those that come up. And instead of looking at it like it is a, um, a problem or it's, it's, it's taking time away from something else, um, even serving my own family. So yesterday um, I had a long list of things I was planning on doing. My daughter said, hey, can we take Bryce to golf and then go shopping? I was like, I uh, kind of had a list of things to do, but you know. Let's do it, right? And um, so that's where I'm making that margin. I told my husband today, I'm actually on Tuesday. Like today's Tuesday and I'm on my Tuesday list getting things done. So even though I had taking time away, I'm finding that if I will leave margin in my life, I can still get things accomplished. The, the things that matter, right? Because sometimes we have things on our list that we can just mark off. Listen to um, someone this morning, um, Darren Hardy, talk about, hey, sometimes you just need to mark things off your list that really aren't that important. So I know after Zoom, um, it has me wanting to leave more marginal time to serve others. So again, I um, just think about how you can serve people, whether it's your family, your team, your leaders, your cross-line friends, your community, how you can help. Um, and if you need something to do for Christmas to serve others, um, Jennifer Webster, I'm not sure if she's on here right now, but she is leading a group. I know Sunshine had marked that she was going to help, but she's doing hoodies and hams to help some people in the Oklahoma City area. So um, if you are looking for a way to serve others, and um, we can get you set up with that and paired up with Jennifer. Um, we then heard from Rhonda Boyle again. She joined us for serving with our strengths. She shared how we can use our strengths to have more energy and to help serve others. Um, knowing our strengths and knowing the strengths of our team helps us to work together. I want to share that I have learned a lot from Rhonda this past year, and I can see how me working in my strengths and allowing my team to work in theirs has helped in two specific instances. So I want to use how I have used these tools and these coachings to help me as a leader. Um, I had a leadership retreat in May, and I'm going to be honest, my stress was minimal. Um, because I allowed my leaders to work in their strengths. 
I allowed my leaders to come in and do a portion of it. I also had sunshine there. She's kind of giving raindrops and stuff, making people feel good too. But um, I found that if I allow my leaders, my team members to work in their strengths, it takes a lot of stress off of me and allows me to work in my strengths. And hey, my strength is command and it's telling people what to do. And I had no problem with that. So all was good, right? Um. And then again, I just um, helped put together a um, Christmas party for our team this past weekend. And again, guys, it was very little, there was no, I don't even know that I had any stress other than waiting for the weather and wondering like, is this going to go on? But I have some great leaders and I allowed those leaders to work in their strengths. So when I had someone say, hey, do you need help with anything before? I'm like, I saw your home. You're great at decorating. Do you want to help decorate? She's like, yeah. I mean, she brought in trees to, to decorate and stuff. So, you know, when you start to know your leaders and your members and what their strengths are and allow them to work in those strengths, then it's going to make things easier for you and it's going to make them take responsibility for what they're doing and they're going to be a part of things. So, um, if nothing else, I've really learned that this year from Rhonda is, um, that's how we get our energy. So if you find somebody on your team that has absolutely no energy, first make sure they're drinking their Ningxia Red, their Zing, and their Nitro, right? But also make sure that they're working in their strengths. If they're consistently and constantly working on these weaknesses that they have because they think that they need to be somebody else, help them see what their strengths are so they can work in them, okay? And um, let's see, then we had, um, we had our Thanksgiving break and stuff. And so we had Marla Hill, um, essentially, and I went and did some recording with her guys. She, um, she is amazing just to get to know her, but she put together that, um, you are an anointed world changer, these series of videos. Um, and I will say what I've learned from Marla is that no matter where we are in life, whether it's at home with our children, in a workplace, in a community, in our church, that we are to serve others with the gifts that God has given us. And that starts with ourselves. Okay. Um, yes, each of you are a gift and there are people on this earth that you are to serve. That's why you are put here. There may be people that you are specifically put here on earth to serve. If we let our insecurities or our lack of self-worth and any other negative thoughts that lead to negative feelings lead us to not doing our God-given purpose here on earth, then we have let the devil win, right? So Marla has found her own life strategy that works for her to talk to herself. She likes to use the mirror while she's brushing her teeth and brushing her hair, but to really use scriptures to change her thoughts because her thought process, she was finding, she was feeling that anxious anxiety, that depression. Um, guys, those feelings are based on what we're thinking. Okay. Everything I've been researching for the last few months as I've been working with these, I'm like, I always thought it was the feelings that came first and then the thoughts, but no, it's the thoughts, then the feelings. Okay. So she was able to start changing her thoughts by changing these things, she found that um, she got rid of her anxiety and depression, and she became the anointed world changer that God put her on this earth to be. So my question for you is, who is ready to get there and out there and change the world? All right. I see some hands going up. So um, that's really all I have for month four. There was so much information that we have um, put out there for the last four months. This month, um, we talked about build. Um, are you going to talk about that, Sunshine? No? Okay. I was just going to say, um, and you can unmute yourself so we can just talk here. But um, we talked about building. Building your business is what's going to get you through December and through 2019. If you are not building your business and you said, I'm doing this as a job, you need to ask yourself the question, how am I doing this as a job, right? So when we go to a job, go to work, and we get a paycheck, right, we have a list of things that we're supposed to do to get paid. So that's kind of what a business building plan is, is putting together what you need to do to get that paycheck. Next week, I'm going to walk through setting goals. Um, I'm going to share how I'm taking my business plan for 2019 and setting short-term goals and long-term goals. So again, if you have not written out what you want your story to look like for 2019, I highly, I'm going to highly 
underline, bold that word, highly recommend that you do that this week. Just grab a, a notebook or you know, a piece of paper if you like to type or I have journal books that I write in. Get something and write down what you want that 2019 to look like. If you don't have a business plan, then I would really think about that too, what you want your business plan to look like. Again, we have the six squared strategy. And um, I will share in my Facebook group my story of what I am, um, I want my 2019 to look like. I'm going to um, challenge Miss Sunshine to do the same, to share that with you guys before um, next Tuesday. And um, a little bit about my business plan, which I said is the six squared strategy. But remember, this is my story and my plan. You get to come up with your own. You get to do this business your way. You get to set your own goals. But remember, what you focus on is what you get. So if you don't know what you want and you don't have a plan, then you won't know if and when you get there. So let's write that story and let's believe, as Gary Cox said, that it will happen and take the steps to turn each page each and every day. All right. So I think we're going to open this up for questions because I want to hear from you guys. Um, if you have any questions about the last four and a half months that we've had, um, if there's been something that's really talked to you, if you have any stories to share with us about how you're growing, um, if you feel like you're claiming your harvest, what this has done for you. And you can chat in the box or you can just unmute and um, talk with your mouth. I'm excited to hear about how you do, how you go about your planning for the next year. Cause I just, to me, I get kind of stuck and tripped up on that type of stuff. So I okay. know you're the queen. So Alicia, what I recommend is right now, I want you to just write down what you want 2019 to look like. And that doesn't just mean your business. I'm talking about your life. What do you want your life to look like? You know, whether that's with family, how much time you want to spend doing your work, um, you know, if you're wanting to travel, like all, all things, picture what your life is. Even if you want to, you can write down what you, what the perfect day would look like. Um, a lot of times that's a good way to start, you know, just look at the perfect, perfect day. Are we going to ever have a perfect day? You know, <laughs> maybe one. <laughs> but if, I'll tell you. You won't even know if you had a perfect day if you never write down what a perfect day looks like. You may have had that perfect day and didn't even know it because it just went right by you. Okay? That's right, Lisa. You won't get nowhere if you don't know where you're going. So mom says at the beach. Okay, so every day is going to be at the beach, mom? <laughs> You, you can put that in there, but just know if your perfect day only has the beach and you don't live at the beach, you're going to have to make some to have to move. Family to move to the beach, so it wouldn't be perfect without you guys. But All right. I, I could spend quite a bit of time there. Yes. So definitely add it in, but know that your perfect day may not always be at the beach if that's going to not be your every day, 365 days. Well, if I can get all y'all to move there, it would be. Yeah, probably not going to happen, but you can go, you can go move in with Mary, go visit Mary by the beach. <laughs> but definitely add that into your life plan so that you're planning it and you know what you're working towards. I have a that question. So we can all go there. That's right. Yes, Tina. I have a question on what you talk about. You talk about, um, or not what you talk about, sorry. You mentioned uh, planning your job, working every day. I find myself doing studying and whatnot, but a lot of days as I'm trying to work, I'm trying to figure out where do I even start? I mean, I know there's some things, planning out cards, you know, things like that, mail outs, whatnot, but what would you recommend as a daily basis to improve the things that I'm working on at home, not the out? reaching people but what I'm doing does that make sense like in my house yeah but again that's going to look um different for each person because it's going to look at what your business plan is um I can say for me some of the things that I do I don't do on a daily basis it's something I have on a monthly basis so 
on the first of every month, I welcome, I should say within the first five days, because it depends on when the first comes, but I have written down what I'm going to do my first five days of the month, which is I'm going to welcome everybody from the month before. Um, so that looks a certain way for me on what I do. Um, at the end of the month, on the 25th, every month, I always um, send an email out to all inactives. If anybody was an inactive on my personal enrollment, I do that on the 15th. And I either call, text, or Facebook message, however I typically um connect with them. So I'm just throwing a few things out there. Those are things that I have found that I do, but again, it's not a, a daily thing. It's what I want to make sure I accomplish in the month to take care of my team. But again, that's taking care of my team and not really building my business. Does that make sense? On the prospect end, you can always write a list and then decide how you're going to contact them when you do do the outside of the home stuff or uh, when you know when the hours are appropriate to contact people yeah so the five 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 that we worked on the last couple of um, the first couple of months and um, that's definitely a strategy that you can utilize um, again you can decide if that's 25 in a month you're going to do five you know at a time or if you're gonna do 25 a week, like you get to make those decisions, but um, that goes back to more of the business building part um, of having a plan and what that plan's going to look like. So making a list, remember enrolling new members um, on with a kit and getting on ER and then helping those people do the exact same thing is. Yeah, I really like uh, the five points that Gina brought up because that's what it's all about so uh, that 555 I told you I was gonna bring it up and I didn't so that um, 25 if you're if you're really serious and this is your job then 25 people a week I think is a really good aggressive number to go to look forward to uh, to try to contact 25 people a week um, if you're doing this as a business, uh, Gary Cox said 30 people a day, right? He's making 30 calls a day. That is for people who have a ton of leads. If you do go for it, call those people. If that's, if that's something that you can and want to do, uh, for a lot of people, that's very aggressive. And, uh, just with the, with the 25 a month, I just want you to imagine that if 19 to 23 of those are going to be no, how are you going to feel at the end of the month when you've gotten maybe one positive response, maybe two people that you can still follow up with? So just keep that in mind. Um, Gary was saying those 30 calls, I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure that he, he is a big producer. He probably does... 30 calls a day. But what I'm saying is um, he made a really good point that you don't end on a sour note. I mean, like you keep going. Even if you don't get a yes, you want to keep going until you get a positive, like you feel good about what happened, right? So 25 a month might not be enough for you to feel good about the results. Right. Sunshine has a good point here because I think a lot of times, um, we don't really think about percentages. So actually Lisa's on here and we were talking at the Christmas party about the number of engagement on like a Facebook page or a Facebook group. And um, if you're getting 10% and they're engaged in something, you are doing really good. So if you think about that 25 people in a month, if you get 10%, that's two and a half people that um, you're getting engagement from. However that looks, whether it means getting them to the next step, getting them to a yes, you know, something other than a, a no or an ignored message here. Um, 10% is kind of like the ballpark. So if you change that to a hundred, right? We're looking at 25 a week and we're now have contacted a hundred people and you look at 10%, that's 10, right? That, that looks a whole lot different than two and a half people. And so those numbers that she's looking at, um, we really, you know, and I know everybody's not green like me, but just having that information to understand that that's the norm. 
that's just the way things are. That's the way our society is. Um, so to be aware of that and to put that into effect as you're putting together your business building plan and knowing the numbers that you're going to need to work with. Um, yes, these are people. So I don't want to say they're a number, but when you're writing them down, you're seeing that's kind of what you're calculating. And so just know that you can work towards helping a lot of people. Um, even in the business of um, as a physical therapist, I saw this all the time. We had what we called the threes and um, in, in thirds. We had a third of the people that came in for an evaluation that never came back. Okay. A third of them would do their exercises. Okay. And a third of them would do their home exercise program. Like they would do everything that they needed to do to get better. And that's what we kind of see in this business too when it comes to just sharing with people. You're going to have a third that are going to come to a class, they're going to leave and they're never going to come back and they're never going to, to listen or maybe it's going to be years down the line. You've got your third that are going to get that kit and that's it, okay? And then you've got the other third that are using it on a monthly basis or on a century rewards and then you're looking at 10% of those that are looking at maybe doing this as a business. And that is a number from all these people you've invited. <laughs> She's talking about the ones that you've already gotten a commitment to take a listen, right? To take right. a look. Yeah. Danny Johnson is a network marketing trainer and she um, says that you can expect at about 3.5 to 5% uh, people answering the phone when you call. So, I mean, she's talking about cold calls and people are making hundreds of calls in a day. Uh, but you're, you're looking at like a 3.5% people answering the phone and responding to you is a good number. So uh, people are not a number, but this is a numbers game as far as working your business. There's just going to be some people that do, some people that don't. And, and we're not saying this to be negative. We're just letting you guys know up front because I think a lot of times people are disappointed when it's really the norm, okay? Um, it's nothing about you. So you're taking something personally and you're bringing those feelings in and it's preventing you from moving forward or it's you're using these as excuses when it's really just how it is. Um, and so that's why we're bringing this up because we just want you to see. Remember, they also say it takes seven to 12 times of contacting somebody before you may even get a response, okay? So yes, we can kind of, again, I don't know if it's a good word to say recycle people, but at some point it's time to go back and, and try and re-engage with these people because it might be the right time. Any questions? I, I know we're like after to, nine. I'd just like to say that years ago in real estate, we were taught that it took 10 no's to get a yes. And I'm talking like, 40 years ago when they were teaching that. But our broker taught us to be excited about the no's because we were getting closer to the yes. Yep. Now, I haven't been doing that for a long time, so now I struggle with getting excited about the no's again. But it really is true. If you can stay excited that you've got a no so you're closer to a yes, it makes it easier to make the calls and make the contacts. I wanted to, uh, to say that, you know, even when you invite people to birthday parties and weddings and fun stuff, a lot of times people don't come and, you know, that might hurt your feelings a little bit, but it's not because they don't want it or it's not a good thing. They just, people are busy, life happens, things happen. So like you said, don't always take it personal. When I took uh, college classes for personal evangelism and uh, Bible doctrine, they taught us that it took 40 touches to the heart to change a mind. So it's just something that I've always used or I've used with our, my businesses. Small touches sometimes go a long ways. Yep. Anybody else? I appreciate y'all reviewing everything because it was a lot of really awesome information since August and it's easy to to forget some of the awesome stuff we learn and if you're not reviewing your notes often enough forget. so I really appreciate you going over especially the um the uh the one with uh 
Gary Cox. Because that was amazing. All of them have been amazing. But he, I like the way he shifted us into, um, you know, rewriting the story. So you get to write your story this week. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, remember to do your homework. It'll benefit you. <laughs> um, I'm so looking forward to um, hearing what Shauna has to say. She, she is, like Allie said, she's really good about planning. And I really appreciate that. I've learned tons of stuff from her. So it's going to be a good week next week. If you do your homework. If you do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know where you're going, you're not going to be able to set a goal for it, guys. I'm just saying. Awesome. Would so. you recommend us doing like, you know how the, um, the ULA guys have the seven areas? I mean, I just, to try and harness that picture, is that a good uh, thing to go off of? Um, yes, ULA you can use. I can tell you um, my little acronym that I use, um, exceptional. So if anybody wants to take notes or, and I can type this in here actually, as I go, this is something that God gave me several years ago and what I've been using. So, um, X equals exercise, not excuses. Okay. And S so it's X E X exercise, not excuses. S is spiritual. E is emotional. Those are your feelings. We have P, which is physical. Um, trying to type and do this at the same time. And then we have S for sleep. Yes, if we're not getting sleep, we're going to have problems. H is hydration because we need that water or that nitro or that um, zing or both, right? And then um, N is nutrition. L-I-F-E. So the L is life, which is living, which is your business. Investing which can mean I say I invest into my children because I homeschool them, okay? Investing can be in your community. Investing could be um, a lots of different ways that we can invest. And financial is our F. And the end is, do I still have energy when I do all of those things? So that is the exceptional life to me. And I'm going to click on this so you guys can see that. But for me, those are where the areas I look at making sure um, – how I want that to look. Okay. So I'm just going to throw sleep out there because we're getting late. Right. So, um, and they say we need eight hours of sleep. If that is not in my life plan and I'm planning on working, you know, two jobs, I, I'm lucky I don't have to work two jobs. I have my homeschooling, my, where I'm investing my family, but this right here is my job. I'm not working as a physical therapist anymore, but if I was doing both, I need to pay attention. If I'm going out to another job and I'm going to be gone for 10 hours, um, I'm going to have a limited amount of time that I'm going to be able to young, do young living and still get my sleep. Right? So looking at all those different things. Um, so when I'm writing out my life, my life, my plan, like what it is I want my life to look like for 2019, these were areas that I hit. You could also use the ULA, um, the F's, finances, friends, fitness, and all those things, fun and stuff. This is just how I have done it. So this is what you'll see when I um, post on ours, um, kind of what my life plan looks like for 2019. Thank you. That helps. And I, I want to pop in to say, um, really evaluate what you're doing that doesn't need to be done by you. Like get rid of the extra, especially if you are serious about working this as a business, there is stuff you are doing that is a time waster for you. It may be beneficial. It may be something that you, you've got it on your heart to do. This might not be the right time. Like building a business takes a lot of effort, a lot of energy, and so you might need to put stuff to the side or get rid of it altogether. Um, since we have started this six squared strategy, man, my life has even gotten more simple because 
now I am laser focused and I know exactly where I'm going. So I know the things that I don't need any longer or the things that have been taking up my time that are not going to get me to where that focus is going to take me. So all the extra, like I'm throwing it off like a boat that needs to have weight off of it. I'm just chunking it out. It's got to go. I, I cleaned out my closet, uh, my office closet. It had so much stuff in it that wasn't in line with what I'm going to do in 2019. I was able to, I'm, I feel so much better just because that stress is off of me. Because once you know where you're going, you know what stuff is going to be necessary to go that way and the stuff that is not. So take nice. a real good look. So again, um, like mom was saying, Jonna, my mom was saying about going to the beach and stuff. So that definitely needs to be in her 2019 and what she wants that to look like. Is that something she wants to do one week of the year? Or is that something she wants to do two weeks of the year? Or is that something that she's wanting to work towards moving to the beach and staying there? Um, but that needs to be part of what she's looking towards because here's the truth of the matter. She can say she wants to go to the beach as hundred times Okay, but if she doesn't have a plan and a goal to get there, chances of her just getting to the beach are pretty slim. Okay, so think about that in all the different areas of your life, whether it's a financial amount, you know, if there's a certain amount of money you're wanting to make a month. Well, how are you going to make that amount of money? What does that look like? If Young Living is your vehicle to get there and you say, hey, I want to make $10,000 a month. Well, what does that look like rank wise? We have this wonderful income you know, this um, income disclosure statement, it tells you right around where the 10,000 mark is. Okay, well, I can look at that. And then these are the things we're going to talk about next week. How do I make a plan to get there to that 10,000? But if you don't know how much money you want to make, and that's not part of your life plan next week, when we're talking about goals, you're going to be like, I don't know, I just want to make more money. Well, more money could be a penny. Right? So you might make a penny more next year. If that is all you say is, I want to make more money. Um, or if, you know, oh, things are good. I'm, I'm fine where I'm at. Well, guess what? I've been there, done that. You're going to stay right there where you're at, right? Um, so just think about the things that you're wanting your life to look like for 2019. And then we will take that and I will give you some ways that you can set some goals to make that happen. And I'll tell you guys, I've been working on this since October and I have rewritten in my journal um, my 2019 five times, okay? And I will probably do that at least two or three more times before next Tuesday. And the reason why is every time I read it, I go, there's something I want a little bit different. Either I want to take something out or I want to add something um, because I'm consistently thinking about, um, as I've been going through this book about joy-filled life, even today it was talking about envisioning it. I spent five minutes this morning just envisioning what I want my life to look like, and I was like, oh, got to write that down in my journal, because it was something else that was a little bit different, and um, I'm beginning to see those changes, and this is not something I've done in the past. I've been a dreamer my whole life, but writing down my next year is not something I have done. This is all new for me, too, but... Um, it's amazing. And it's, so don't think that you're writing this and like this is in ink and like you can't change it and this is the way it is. This is just for you to start thinking about what is it that I really want? What do I want for 2019? Um, and then how am I going to get there? Like what are some things that I can put into effect? And again, that's going to change every month because if you make some goals in January, you're, you're going to make some new goals in February because things are already changing. <laughs> Okay, and the last thing I want to say is if you feel bad about the amount of money you want to make, like that secret amount of money you want to make, the amount that you don't tell anybody, your dreams aren't big enough. We got to have money to do the things that we were here called to do, right? Lives that we need to change. So make your dreams bigger and then you won't feel bad about wanting that money. All right. So I'll share right now since Sunshine said that my goal for 2019, six-figure monthly income. Not six figure in, in the year, like it's been. Six figure a month. How about you, Sunshine? Yes, ma'am. I want my month, my annual income to become my monthly income. That's my goal. No big deal. So, 
thank you guys. You know where to reach us if you have any other questions. Um, again, this in the next few days, I will put in our group um, what I'm asking from you guys because I'm never going to ask something from you that I'm not willing to do first and um, challenging Sunshine to do the same in you guys' group. Absolutely. All right, ladies, thank you very much. Have a great evening. Get some sleep. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night.